The city of Jingdezhan in southeastern China supplied porcelain to the emperors of China for more than 500 years. Local rock and clay provided the bone and the flesh for the hard, white, translucent ceramic material called porcelain. A clear glaze coated the porcelain and made it glow, while decoration painted both under and over the glaze added jewel-like colors. Beginning in 1402, China's emperors ordered thousands of porcelain pieces from Jingdezhan every year for use at the court in Beijing, in state rituals, as official gifts, for dining, and for decoration of the palace. In the heyday of the Imperial Porcelain Workshop, more than 10,000 specialists were at work. Their descendants continue that tradition here in modern Jingdezhan, which is still the center of porcelain production in China. Dozens of workshops produce everything from inexpensive tableware to impressive display pieces of fine quality. Even with the introduction of modern technology, many methods of porcelain production have not changed greatly since the days when imperially appointed supervisors coordinated the complex series of tasks required to produce porcelain. Porcelain clay is mixed from two local materials, china stone and kaolin. China stone is a granitic rock whose Chinese name means white bricks. The China stone mines active today are found deep within the Sanbao Mountains, not far from the Jingdezhen workshops. Today, miners use explosives to extract the China stone. In imperial times, the work was done by muscle power and hand tools. At mills on the riverbank, water-powered wooden pestles crush the rock into a fine powder. The powder is mixed with water in large tanks. Cleaned of impurities and formed into bricks. The white clay known as kaolin comes from Gaoling Mountain. Teams of miners dig the kaolin and process it in a manner similar to that used for china stone. In Jingdezhen workshops, the china stone and kaolin are pulverized again and mixed together with water, cleaned, then left to dry until the porcelain clay is the correct consistency. Workers knead the porcelain clay by foot and by hand until it is smooth and pliable and ready to be shaped. Years of practice lie behind the potter's seemingly effortless transformation of the clay into vessel shapes. Large pieces require a team of potters to shape them. Other artisans shave millimeters of clay from the sides and rims of the partly dried vessels using specialized tools. They also carve bases or foot rings from the flat bottoms. After drying completely, the pieces are ready for decoration. 
At Jingdezhan, most porcelains are decorated with designs painted directly on the hard clay with cobalt, which turns blue after glazing and firing. The colorless glaze is mixed from china stone, burnt limestone, and water. Specialists apply glaze to small pieces by dipping them directly into the vat of glaze. Larger pieces are glazed by blowing the solution onto the piece through a tube that has a fine mesh on one end. This technique produces a thin, even layer of glaze. After firing, the glaze will form a glassy coating that protects the surface and adds a beautiful luster. Sometimes glaze is used as the sole decoration. Mineral pigments can be suspended in the glaze to create a rainbow of colors, such as red made from copper. After the pieces have been glazed, they are prepared for firing. Thick-walled containers made of coarse clay, called saggers, protect the porcelains during firing. The saggers are also made by specialists at Qingdezhen. Firing takes place in a huge kiln built of bricks. Workers pile up towers of saggers inside the kiln in a carefully prearranged order. Once the saggers are in place, the entrance to the kiln is sealed with bricks. In the past, the kilns at Jingdezhen were fired with wood as the fuel. Today, oil-burning kilns have replaced the wood-burning ones, except at this workshop, where the former method is preserved. Workers continuously feed firewood into the kiln as the temperature slowly climbs to 1,250 degrees centigrade. Workers at the Imperial Kiln did not have any mechanical devices to measure temperature. The kiln specialist gauged the temperature by watching the flames gradually turn from red to bluish white. There was little room for error, and the success of the entire process depended on a proper firing. Prayers were offered to the kiln god before the firing began. The kiln is allowed to cool somewhat before it is emptied, but workers still must wear gloves and heavy clothing to protect themselves from the hot saggers. Some porcelains are complete at this point, but others receive additional decoration. Artists paint designs on the glazed surfaces using brightly colored enamels made from lead and silica. Emperors placed orders for designs of five-clawed dragons, symbols of imperial power, and for auspicious designs of certain flowers, fruits, or animals, such as the crane, which symbolized immortality. A second firing at a low temperature in a small kiln melts the enamels and fixes them on the porcelain. The finished porcelains are carefully examined for flaws. In the past, workshop supervisors selected only perfect pieces to be sent to the imperial court. Even today, pieces that do not stand up to the harsh inspection are immediately destroyed. 
When the order from the Imperial workshop was ready to be sent to the court, the chosen porcelains were wrapped in bales of straw for transportation along a river network to Beijing. Pieces from non-imperial workshops were sent to local markets throughout China or exported to many parts of the world. Porcelain production at Jingdezhen retains many of the careful procedures and skills that were developed under imperial patronage. Each piece made today in Jingdezhen reflects the city's heritage as the provider of porcelain to emperors.